Hi, everyone. We're joined by LA Galaxy head coach and sporting director, Greg Vanny. We'll start here with Damian Tahoe. Hey, Greg. Um, would you... Not a handball. Oh, sorry. I thought you were well, That was one of my questions. But yeah. overall tonight, um, frustrating night? Or how would yeah, you see frustrating this? night. Yeah, frustrating night. Uh, some, some definitely some good moments in, in the attack. We got into some good areas. We got to the end line several times. Um, obviously scored one first half and offside. We give away a goal off of a, a set piece um, that we have. I think it's one guy who, who steps up when the play starts happening instead of staying with the group. So we kind of open up a little window there for them. We give up that goal. Um, we have some good possessions, still not not perfect for sure. Um, yeah, and, and ultimately the result comes down to one play. It really does. And uh, the one play is a non-handball. And um, I just don't understand for the life of me how a referee who's 25 yards behind the play and directly behind the attacker sees handball. Because we, even when you watch it on, on replay, it's not a handball. And you have all the angles in the world, potentially, and VAR, let them make the call if it's a handball. You're guessing from 25 yards behind. Uh, I watched it back. It, to me, doesn't look like a handball at all. Um, but once he makes the call, it changes the it changes everything. And so it's a big guess by him, and it impacts the game. And we could have played better. We had some good moments. But football games come down to plays. They've come down to moments. And that was a moment that was a big moment in the game. Did it hit him up? It looked like it hit him hit up him right in the, the body, so in right the chest. Here. Yeah, and if you don't have arms, maybe, but everybody has arms, and it didn't hit his arm that was about in this position. It hit him right here. You can ask Dayan. He has the same – same. I think he would know, but also watching the video is very – for me, it's obvious. Um, but, again, a referee who's behind the play by 25 yards and behind the player uh, somehow saw it. So I, I just don't – I don't understand why we're there in the world of VAR. We don't need that guess. Josh? Hey, Greg, uh, Looking at Tyler Boyd's first start, um, what did you see yeah. from him? He seemed to give you guys a, a lot of pleased. width. Yeah, pleased. Dynamic, uh, competitive, feisty. Got some good one-on-one -on -one actions where he can you can show he can unbalance people in the one-on-one. -on -one. He's got some pace to get in behind, some good movements. Uh, he's got some quality in the service for sure. So uh, it was good to get him going. Again, he showed up late, so physically we got him into a good spot now. But you see how he can help impact our group. and. Uh, defensively, his work was good. Again, getting him connected with everybody is is another step because he's had a, a kind of a short window of time, but uh, but some good moments. And Dayon, uh, did you get what you wanted out of him? He seemed a little more dangerous. I think maybe the width helped a little bit get him yeah, involved. Yeah, I, I thought he thought he was good at linking up plays. I uh, thought he brought guys into the game at times when balls were played into him. He was able to hold and set them back to Ricky or guys coming on, and we were able to continue our attacks. That's good. Uh, he was able to get into some spots in front of the goal. Um, we didn't always hit the right crosses or at the right time. Sometimes we took an extra touch, lost a little time, then try to play a cross when we, I think it, we need to whip it in a little bit faster. Um, but I thought in general, helping, uh, helping the group, I thought he was more involved and we got him more involved today than we did in the first two games. Um, so uh, yeah, better. Um, and, and Pooj did some excellent stuff on the ball, but I noticed his interpretation of space, particularly in the first one, that late run from midfield as well. Is that something that you've kind of seen developing his game also? Yeah, I mean, we'd like to continue to see, uh, see moments like that. Um, again, I think it's for us over the course of the night, I think there's still a few too many balls that we lose going straight down the middle instead of getting our wide players involved in the game more often and better. Uh, but we force some plays through central areas. There's times when I think we can drop down, get the ball, build some speed going forward, and then Ricky can arrive as the play continues to get go up going forward because he's good at picking things up, playing forward, and then building some momentum into the attack like he did on, in that particular situation. So I think just some of these moments just need to be more consistent. I think they're, um, they're not, not just for Ricky, but for the group as a whole. There are things that are working for us out on the field, and we need to recognize those and, and be consistent, more consistent with those things that are working. Uh, and then they have to, they'll have to close them down, and when they close them down, then we can go to the next thing. But I think there was a lot of moments and things that were very particular that were working through the game, and we needed to get back to those things more frequently than we did. And when we did, we were dangerous. And so um, something that, sorry, the question was about Ricky, but I think it's, it was inside of that, the midfield decisions, things like that, and that was 
um, one of the one of the things. Greg, thanks thanks again for your time. Yep. A couple of questions. First of all, Jonathan Bond, um, how is he? Uh, kind of jammed his shoulder up, um, so we won't really know until they have a scan. They don't think anything too serious involved with it, but it was more uh, kind of jamming uh, kind of the joint in there a little bit. So uh, I'll know more on Monday before I can really uh, get anywhere. I mean, obviously left in a sling, which isn't a great sign, but um, but he also wasn't in excruciating pain, and, and, and he was able to get up pretty quick. And when you really do a shoulder, I don't think you want to move anywhere too fast. So we're hoping, fingers crossed, that it's minor and nothing too major. And the second question is, um, how do you evaluate the team where it is now? Um, because you're missing so many key pieces, Chicharito, Costa, Sega, the guys you're bringing in, you know, Caligari. Sure. This is not anywhere, I mean, you're missing probably half your lineup, yet you're out there playing every day and you're, as you said, th you know, some good things are happening. How do you look yeah. at this team now? Yeah, we, we just, we have to keep building the seasons a process and uh, every game is an, an opportunity to continue to see where we're at and improve. And the guys that we have that are in are, uh, you know, are responsible for getting results as we all are and, and are trying to give their best performances to state their claim on positions when they're getting opportunities. So um, at the end of the day, we, you know, we want to be in this thing for 50 plus games. And so everybody's going to be necessary and needed. And in MLS, I think, you know, most teams go through their moments in the course of an MLS season where you're, you're missing somebody, you have some things. We're happy to go through it right at the beginning. Hopefully we won't have many more of these down the stretch, but we're going through our phase of a couple of big injuries along with, uh, with some guys that we're still trying to get into the doors and get integrated into the group. So, uh, but the guys that are here, it's, uh, you know, a process of keep, get, keep getting better every game and take points along the way. And uh, today was one of those opportunities. Next week will be another. Hey, Greg. Um, you know, Dehan was able to get more involved today. Um, just how monumental of a difference is it to be able to see him kind of be able to dictate uh, a bit more in the box? And also, I guess, your thoughts of him getting caught up uh, with the Serbian national team? Yeah, again... You know, as I've said all week and the last couple of weeks, uh, Dayan, Javier, our strikers are are going to be as good as our team is in terms of build, creating attacks, building attacks, getting movement around them. Uh, that's the kind of players they are. They're finishers. Uh, they're not guys who create, you know, goals out of nowhere. They're guys who, who in the collective movement of things are great finishers. And so... Dayan will be more effective when the team is more effective. And tonight we were more effective than we were in the last couple of games, and that opened up some things for, for him for sure. And so um, that's, that's going to be the case for any of our guys that are up there because that's, that's who they are. Uh, so we need to keep being efficient as a group and, and making good decisions and smart movements. And if we do that, then our guys will get chances and, and they'll put things in the net. Uh, relating to Dayan's call-up, I think it's fantastic for him. We'll miss him. But... Um, you know, call-ups like this for a young player are huge for their confidence, uh, exposure, and, and um, an opportunity for him. So it's, it excites him because anytime you come to MLS as a European player, I think t for your national team to be have their eyes on you, call you in, that's an important thing for our league. It's an important thing for a young player. Uh, and he has an opportunity to go there and hopefully um, put on a good uh, performance and keep, keep stating his claim for a position there. Hey, Greg. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if you were aware there was a, a fan protest before the game, just kind of the similar stuff that's been going on in the past whatever so months. Um, good turnout in the, in, the, in the stadium, obviously. What, was your, what are your thoughts on kind of the atmosphere today? Uh, seemed a little weird just to not hear that constant noise from the supporters group, but like I said, just good overall atmosphere in general for, for a home opener. Yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for the people who came in the stadium and supported the group, and the guys used every bit of the energy that was in there to try to, uh, to, try to push them forward. Uh, and we'll keep focusing on that and we'll keep focusing on getting better and we'll keep keep focusing on winning games and trying to win games and uh, and whoever wants to be in the stadium we're going to try to entertain them and and make it exciting for them thanks for your okay. time Greg thanks